Good evening, Rock Women. I know, right? I love the enthusiasm. Two things I want to share with you. Number one, I received a picture in a group text. Um, it was a snow bunny. Someone had taken the snow, dyed it pink, and it looked like an actual bunny. And at first I wanted to laugh and then I wanted to throw my phone, all in the same emotion. But uh, the other thing, tonight I know your homework. Wasn't it most excellent again? I'm being on service, being servant hearted. And I, I, for some, and, and like for me, this is like, I love, let's just be real, real here. I love to be served. <laughs> I like, I go on a cruise, and they say, what they'll say is to you, it is my pleasure. And I would say, it's their pleasure to serve me. (laughs) Okay. You know, and it's just a great experience. But so tonight, we're not on a cruise. (laughs) Let's be clear about that. We are going to um, look hard and true into truly being a servant-hearted woman of God. You are fashioned in the image of God. And with that comes some weight, which is to be servant-hearted woman. So tonight, haven't we walked in the sandals of a lot of women? We have just really been clicking on. I think we have um, like maybe four weeks, four weeks left. And then we'll be wrapping it up. But tonight, you and I are going to walk alongside a woman, and her name is Ruth. And boy, did she have a servant heart. In studying servant-hearted in Ruth, there's only the four chapters. And um, it's really hard not to actually talk about everything about her characteristic, because there's so much there, Erin, isn't there? I mean, it's, it's, she's just full of things to take away from. <clears throat> but tonight, we're just going to kind of just narrow it in and just talk about her heart, okay, tonight? And then where we're going to talk about tonight, and I think it, for us, we are going to be challenged in our relationship with other women and with people as to who we can serve. I think we can do some takeaways from it. But tonight, we're going to just kind of step in right where she was in her life. So tonight, we're going to step in. We're going to find Ruth with her mother-in-law, which is Naomi. We find that they are traveling to Bethlehem. And the reason they are moving, they were in Moabite. Both of these women, they're now widows. They're leaving the land of pagan worship, idolatry. This is where Ruth grew up. Now, Naomi, she knows better. But this is where she is. This is where God has her at this time. So we're going to just step into these two women's lives right now. They're traveling together. And they are headed to Bethlehem. The reason being, they had to leave for many reasons, It's four chapters, but it's packed. As I always say, it's always a page turner. And, um, but they have to leave now because they're both widows. They have no money. They have no place to stay. And that is not good for these two women. So they have to go back. So Naomi tells Ruth, we're going to go back to Bethlehem because this is where my people are. This is where some of my family, this is where some of my friends are. And we're going to go back to honoring God. We're going to leave this pagan um, land in which they have found themselves. And now Ruth, she stays right with Naomi, her mother-in-law. Isn't that beautiful? Especially in an age where there's so many jokes about mother-in-laws. But this is no joke. Ruth truly loved her mother-in-law. In fact, she tells her, you don't have to turn there, I'm going to tell you, in Ruth chapter 1, 
verse 16. This is how she feels about her. Because Naomi is trying to tell her, listen, girl, you can stay here. You could go back to your family. I mean, you have no husband, so you don't need to stay with me. You need to go back and maybe start a life for yourself. But this is what Ruth says to her. But Ruth said, I love the word of God. Do not urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. Thus may the Lord do to me and worse if anything puts death parts from you and me. That verse just gave you a window into the heart of Ruth. She is now a new believer. She's telling her, your God is going to be my God now. She's walking away from those pagan gods that she had, and somehow she must have known that there was some sort of faith. I don't know what her husband's um, what their walk was like, it doesn't tell us. I don't want to speculate. But I'm just telling you like, what it says right here. She's saying, your God is now going to be my God. And I love that. And so now she is starting on a brand new adventure. She's starting on her brand new life and her faith. And I think to myself, what devastation here for Ruth and what she's gone through. And I don't... And, Everything that she has gone in while she was moved and now she doesn't have a husband and now even her her sister-in-law was like, I'm not going to go with you. I'm going to go someplace else. But she says, I think to myself, even in ladies in our most devastating times in our lives and we all have stuff that happens that will rock you, you and I have a living hope in Jesus Christ. God is always in the move and on the move in your life. Just like Ruth, God had a plan for her, and he has a plan for you as well. He is always know that in the middle of all of this, and you think, oh my word, Paula, how can testing and trial be tied to a servant-hearted person? Well, ladies, when we begin to serve in our own testings and trials, what does it do? It gets your eyes off yourself, and it gets you focused on Jesus and get you focused on other people. And the Bible is very clear that we are to carry one another's burdens. That is what the scripture tells us to do. When you carry someone's burdens and you come alongside of them, that is actually serving. Serving, ladies, encompasses so many aspects of your life. It's not just the mission field. It is right where you're at. It is the relationships that you have with each other. To serve is to assist. Can you say that? To serve is to assist. That's what it is. It's not, it's it's to serve is to actually assist. And Ruth, in the middle of her crisis, she still is assisting and caring for Naomi. That's that's the beautiful part of it. She's still gonna, I'm gonna just serve Naomi and leave her own devastation in her own pain, she doesn't even talk about it. In fact, Galatians, uh, the Gospel of John in Galatians tells us that our motive, ladies, we are to serve one another in love. That is our motive for serving. And boy, does Ruth give an example of that. Her love, I'm just thinking when she said, your God shall be my God, that's just a new believer in her newfound faith, wouldn't you say? It's just in her new God. And she was all in. And I love her faithful attention when you're reading the book of Ruth. It's her faithful attention that she gives to sweet Naomi. I just love that. Her real servant heart is to stay with her aging mother-in-law. I mean, I'm sure she could have had many other choices. But no, God wanted her and, and put in her heart to stay with Naomi and stay with her and caring for her. And we find actually Ruth later on, as you read um, her story, she's an actual humble gleaner. She's realized that now we're now going to be in Bethlehem. Uh, Now we have to have some place to stay. 
and Ruth has some, Naomi has some friends, but Ruth now has to go out and give some provision. So what Ruth would do, <clears throat> um, in the biblical days, you had gleaners in the field, and then there was people that would come along, and they would glean the field and take all of your wheat and whatever they were gleaning and take it to the market. Well, the custom was, in biblical days, if you were poor or if you had no money, you were allowed, by law, to come through and pick up whatever the gleaners had left or whatever the gleaners had dropped. You were allowed to come and pick it all up. So we find Ruth in the fields gleaning, just serving her little heart out, picking things up, taking it back home for whatever bread or whatever they want to make to have provision for her and for Naomi, which leads us to Naomi, to, for her and Naomi, but to lead us to Ruth. To serve ladies is to have compassion. You have to have compassion for others. Ruth had great compassion for Naomi. She had tremendous, tremendous passion. And I ask you, to be servant-hardened, you have to look and see a need and then just step in to serve. So I always think, and I always do my own heart check as well, because ladies, I am walking this out just like you are. I always have to do a heart check, and I say, oh my word, Paula, where am I lacking in my service? I mean, it's, it's a good, valid question. Am I lacking in, in being servant-hearted? Because a servant heart, actually, ladies, is helping and loving without expecting anything in return. Now, that can be hard. <laughs> you are helping, you're assisting, and you're serving without expecting anything in return. Is, what is your motive? I know you talked about, I know you wrote that all down in your homework. The Bible says in Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus is always going to be our example for, uh, ultimately for service. Paul tells us in our memory verse, that was a good one, wasn't it? I always say that's a drop the mic. To reject selfish ambition, serve with humility, and be concerned for the interest of others. That tells it all. And Philippians tells us, uh, to be servant-hearted, we need to look at the ultimate servant, which was Jesus Christ himself. And ladies, serving should never beneath, be beneath any of us. In order to live that out, I was thinking about that. I thought to do that, you have to do Romans 12.1, I think. <laughs> you know, it's, we've studied Romans in great depth, but Romans 12.1 tells us what do we have to do to ourselves? We have to, you have to die to yourself. You have to die to your um, own needs, your own wants. You have to lay down that flesh and ask God to do the work in your life to be done to help serve others. Because when we are serving, what are we serving it out of? Abundance of grace. We see ourselves how we really are. In Romans 12, 3 tells us, that for though the for through the grace given to me I say to everyone among you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to it's the word here that's what he's saying don't think more of self don't think that you're all that stuff okay <laughs> little Paula version there but to think as he should have to have sound judgment keep sound judgment of yourself girls when you get a true perspective, it is through grace and mercy that he has saved you, that we out of a turn abundantly begin and want to serve others. To consider your, their interest and in conversation, as your memory verse said, more than what we are own. And sometimes, is that not hard? You're like, well, I just want to tell them about me. And my story, right? But no, the Bible says, no, your interest is it's not about you. What? <laughs> it's about you. 
It's not, it, and that's we, and it's so hard in a world in which we live in that always wants to serve and tells you it is about you and you're being bombarded by that with, and inundated with from Facebook to the TV commercials to absolutely everything. But according to the word of God, we are to prefer others and take a back seat, so to speak. Because when you do this, girls, it links you to Jesus. It links you to Christ. It's to have unity in the body when you prefer one another. Because even in this room, we have all different backgrounds. We have all different personalities. We have all different interests. But we need to guard our heart, girls, towards unity because Jesus came to serve. And what is it, girls? We live under his authority. Most of all, we live under his authority. And when you are wanting to serve, and if you're able to serve, another way of serving would be to, um, it could be through financial assistance. Possibly, you know, hospitality. Uh, mm. You stand up here for a minute. <laughs> oh, it's real, real, real up here. To serve also, girls, I love this part. It's to assist, to help anyone accomplish what's best for somebody else. Where you can come alongside and say, you know what? This really would be good for them. How can I help you with that? That is part of it. And the motive of your heart, girls, it was in your memory verse, and I said it laid it right out. Just boom, boom, boom how it is. And you need, at times, I call it an attitude adjustment for your motive of serving. At times, we actually need to really think it through. What is my motive for serving? Is it pure? Is it not about getting attention? It is not looking for approval. It's not just checking the box and go, yes, I served in that, and I'm done. It is not about power. It is not about to have status. We have to be very, very careful in our motive for pure love as to why we serve and what motivates us to serve. I love the fact that Charles Swindoll once said, a servant-hearted attitude keeps us from a self-minded attitude and serves with consistency. I love that. And Jesus is obviously is always going to be our role model. I love the fact that you should serve with consistency. And that's not just you just do something and then it's, it's over. It should be something that we start to cultivate in our life, to have, be servant-hearted, to really kind of get that into your uh, nature. Because the, the flesh, like I said, we all want to be served but to lay that down and, and be intentional about that. And Jesus' example, girls, was so clear in the Gospel of John when he washed the feet of his disciples that morning. And I know it was the custom because of they all wore their sandals, and that was what they did. And I'm sure the disciples were wondering, who's going who's gonna to clean our feet? And then the scriptures beautifully say that Jesus did. And he also washed Judas' feet. Nobody was left out. So I ask you tonight, are you willing to pick up the servant towel? Are regardless of someone's status, are regardless whether they are weak or whether they're strong, whether they're rich or whether they're poor or whatever their walk of life is, Christ calls us all to be and live servant-hearted towards one another. So are you willing to pick up the servant towel and wash or slash serve someone who hurt you? This is where it gets real. This is where you have that conversation with God. And you say, this is hard. You're asking me to serve someone, and you just fill in the blank. Because everyone in this room can fill in a blank, including myself. But this is what he's asked us to do. 
You have to put that aside, and you got to keep focused on Jesus, girls, remembering you have been forgiven. They deserve forgiveness. They deserve salvation. They deserve love. Jesus is love. Everybody does. Romans reminds us again not to think more highly than you should of yourself in sober judgment. Grace is going to always overflow in our service towards others. <clears throat> Remember, sober judgment it actually is what? It's actually remembering everything that you have is because of God. Keeping yourself in check, you are saved through grace and mercy. Nothing that you have done of yourself. Servant-hearted girls is to freely think of others and be always ready to help. For some girls, I, um, I think we talked about this in our homework, um, the giftings. For some have a gift of service. And for those that, that don't, you're not exempt from this. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, yeah, it's, it's true. God's just working on you. Okay, we're, we're fashioned in the image of God. We've listed all of these beautiful characteristics from his word that he is molding you and fashioning you to be an example because Jesus is the one that calls us to serve one another and we should be ready to serve at any time. Remember we talked about in season and out of season regardless of what you're going through. I love this one part in my study when I was studying. It said believers, I gotta just, I don't wanna mess this up. Believers are to serve one another like spotters. Okay, example. I have never done this. <laughs> but some people in this room have lifted weights. <laughs> well, let me just take, I've taken maybe a two pound and went like this. <laughs> That's it. But I'm talking about real weight litters, weight, weight lifters that you have a spotter. Um, uh, gymnastics, I think, sometimes have spotters, okay? A spotter is someone who stands ready to assist whoever is doing, I'll call it the activity, okay? So you and I as believers, we're standing by. We're the spotters because you're going to have a sister that's lifting a really hard weight in life because I'm going to tell you, Galatians 6.2 tells me that we are to carry one another's burdens. So you have a sister that's on the bench of life and she's going through some stuff, hard stuff. And we, the body, the sisters, we need to have some awareness. And we need to be the spotters. And we need to be there to say, let me help you with that. Let me assist you with that. How can I help you be ready to serve, have eyes, and have a heart that is ready to carry that burden and to pray? Because, you know, to be servant-hearted, like I said, it, it, it covers so much, girls. It's actually just praying for somebody. That's servant-hearted, is to pray. Again, we talked about the financial need. If you're able to do that, you see something that you can step in and take care of that. Some of it is actual physically helping somebody. You see something that's going on, and you're like, well, I got two arms, and I can help with that. It's just doing it, Okay. But then you always have to stop and ask yourself, what is the heart behind my service? Is it pure? Is it pure before God? Because sometimes there's some caution that needs to take place in our service. We have to use wisdom and discernment in our helping because we have to sometimes find out, is my helping and supporting enabling somebody or making them lazy because we're so willing to help? It's so important, girls, to have healthy boundaries. The Bible has all kinds of boundaries in which we are to live by. It is for our own spiritual health that we are given these guidelines. We are not, I was in your homework too, we are not a doormat for others where we run ourselves ragged in service. There is time for physical and spiritual rest that is why discernment is so important. You do not have to say yes to everything. And don't be overcommitted. 
that you're so overcommitted that you don't have time for anything else, then maybe God has something for you to do. Because remember, when we are serving, we are really serving the Lord, amen? (laughs) God is always looking at our heart. Love should be the motive in which we serve. It's the inward motive is that pleases him. Yes, we are physically doing what he has called us to do, but he is always has eyes on our heart and really does a heart check. And that's why we have to be honest with ourselves as to that. A servant-hearted woman, ladies, is not selfish, and she is not self-centered. She is constantly wanting to prefer one another and think of somebody more highly than herself. She is focused on Jesus and pointing others to Jesus as well. I love effective serving. I, I could not remember if this was in her homework or not, but it was Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, do your work heartily to the Lord rather than to man. And there it is in a nutshell. For effective service, just know why you're doing it, You're doing it as unto the Lord, not unto man. You are serving him. So I ask you tonight, are you intentional in your service towards others? And servant living girls will be rewarded in the future. We don't always get to see it this side of heaven. Galatians 6, 9 tells us, do not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And I think, oh my word, what a great promise from God. Sometimes when you're weary from serving and you're being servant hard and you're pouring it in and you get tired. But then his word comes along and encourages your heart. It's his living word that says, listen, don't grow weary in it. Stay in the fight. Stay servant hearted. What a great promise that we have. We always need encouragement from his word, especially in what we live in today. If ever there was a time we we need his word, it is today. I challenge you to serve in an area and serve it well. Stay faithful to it. I would challenge you as well to look around and, and ask, well, where do you think I can serve? And it's okay to try someplace. And you say, you know what? I think maybe God's called me maybe to try something else. But are you trying? Are you putting yourself out there to serve in the body in which we have here? Sowing the seed and waiting for the harvest, girls, the Lord is faithful. First Corinthians tells us that our labor is not what? In vain. God sees how we serve. God also sees our lack of service. Remember, nothing is hidden from God. He sees it all. And that's why you always have to like say, well, you know it. You know my heart. I can't hide from you. That's why you need to be honest with him. And then when you're honest with him, you can be honest with yourself and said, where can I grow in my service? Where can I grow to be more servant-hearted? We can and should be servant-hearted girls in our marriage with our children, you know what, leading by example, even our grandchildren, they're watching. Lead by example with them. Our friends, our church body, and most of all, we can serve our enemies as well. Pick up that towel of service. Because you know what, you and I should never pick and choose who we serve. No one is more deserving than somebody else. Never. You and I, as women, fashion the image of God. We're just the hands and feet being used however God chooses to use us to serve somebody else. Oh, my word. Ruth's obedience to her newfound faith, to her own true God. Wow, did she blaze a trail. Because of Ruth's obedience and faithfulness in her servant heart, Ruth was the great grandfather to King David. <laughs> really? I mean, I'm like, I read, I like had to read it again, and I read it again. I'm like, oh my word, that's right. Of course it's right, it's in his word. 
But I mean, it's like when you think about her obedience, she leaves her land, her people from pagan, follows her mother-in-law, Naomi, to a brand new place to live. And through this, all of this is taking place. And it's through this that the bloodline of Jesus was going to come through. Ruth, think about it. Servant-hearted woman, you and I, redeemed, placed our faith in Jesus Christ, and we are saved. We live under the authority of Jesus, girls. We should be always looking for ways to serve. We should be pointing women to Jesus. We have places of, uh, place our, our interests off to ourselves, not even thinking about it. We should be thinking about other people in their conversation and their interest, willing to give assistance whenever we can, having the eyes and heart to see and have awareness to serve. Ask God, Father, make me aware today. How can I serve today? And trust me, he will show you so you can pick up that towel of service and you can begin to serve and serve well. And who knows, maybe through that service, you can lead someone to Jesus. You never know who you're gonna serve. I'm talking we serve the body, yes, but outside these walls, girls, people you, you come and interact with, there's always kind of people that you're going to talk about and be with. Willing to pick up that towel. Willing to serve even her enemies and to serve with gladness. Oh, that heart check. Not to serve because you have to. Do not let the enemy take something like that and, and run with it. You serve because you love Jesus. And because what he's done for you, you're going to turn around and be servant-hearted towards others. A servant-hearted woman tonight, girls, you serve with consistency. You're going to try to make that into a way of life for yourself and ask God to cultivate that and be obedient to his word. And you want an attitude of the heart, girls, that aligns with the word of God. That is what we're after. That is what we have to be after all the time because I said, with everything that comes at us from all different kinds of directions, this is what you always need to align your self-worth with is his word. What's interesting in the book of Ruth, girls, you never once hear her complain in all the pages that you're going to read about her. And maybe, maybe one day we'll study her. I don't know. There's only four chapters, but there's a lot there. You never hear her complain you never hear her be bitter. Now, Naomi. Oh. <laughs> That's for another Tuesday. Ruth, really, you never, you never, it's, 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 she had just a heart that was just open and just like, okay, this is what we're going to do. I just love it. Such a great, 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 great person to have servant hearted. Ruth was just a humble gleaner, ladies, in a field providing for Naomi and putting Naomi's needs before her own. The care and welfare of her mother-in-law is a beautiful example how we are to care for other people. And there was a plan in motion in Ruth's life that she had no idea what God was going to do with her, but she was willing. And that's what's beautiful about it. You and I, God is always working in our hearts, girls, but we need to be surrendered and obedient to him and to have a servant heart. You and I may never see in this life the impact that your faith and service in Christ, but know that God sees your heart. He wants you to be servant-hearted and he has a divine plan for you. You just think, wow, is this, is this just it? No, there's so much more. Everything you do, do unto the Lord. Even in your daily routines, girls. Like I said, you may never see the impact that you're making on your family. Or how people are watching, that you're, how you're conducting yourself. But whatever it is, do all for the glory of God. Just do that. And he has a plan for all of us to be servant-hearted. Father, I just pray for these women 
is such a beautiful example Ruth had to be servant-hearted, and then we're just challenging our own hearts to live servant-hearted and to have you as an example in how you served and you served well. Father, we fall so short. But Father, it is your word that encourages our heart to get up the next day and do it all over again. Help us to live out your word into our lives and into our feet and into our hands that we can live truly serving others and serving well. Help us to point women to Jesus, Father, through our serving. Help us to always be obedient to your word. In your name we pray. Amen.